Welcome to Web API Tutorials. I am Venkat. This is part 16 built in attribute validations in Web API. In the previous video, we have seen two attributes. First one is a required attribute, second one is a email address attribute. Required attribute will make sure that field is not empty or not null. So, and email address will validate for the valid email. So yesterday we have seen when we added the required attribute or email attribute, it is giving us some error message. If you don't want to show the system generated error message, if you want to show your own error message, you can also do that using the error message property. So there is an error message property for every attribute. Here you can mention your own error message. This time I want to mention here student name is required. So this is my message for email also. Error message equal to please enter valid email address. So these are the error messages I want to display to the end customer or the client who is consuming this API. Let us run this and see it in action. So I'm removing this one and I'm also making it wrong and clicking on execute. This time I'm seeing my own error messages. Please enter valid email address. That is this one. Please enter valid email address and student name is required student name is required that's how you can define your own error messages along with that if you don't want to validate some fields then you can decorate those fields with a never validate yeah validate never so there is a attribute validate never this will make sure that this particular field is not validated if you want some fields not to be validated, you can use this validate never attribute. And coming to the student name, so this time, if I want to create a student name, I can enter any number of characters as part of the student name. So this time, I want to create a student name with 100 characters or 200 characters or 1000 characters. So if you want to restrict this, student name length if you want to accept only maximum 30 characters of student name you can do that using you can do that using string length string length attribute so if you put 100 this will accept maximum of 100 characters for my student name i want maximum 30 characters that's a one thing and and there is other attribute it is a range attribute if you want to accept the students only aged between 10 to 20 years i want to introduce a new property integer age student age must be between 10 to 20. if you want to validate a number range between 10 to 20 or some numbers you can go for range validator and the other validator here is compare validator if you want if you are accepting email or password or a bank account number sometimes we use two fields one field is for email and another field is for confirm email so like a bank account and confirm bank account password and confirm password like that let me introduce the new field so this one is a password field and i want to validate this field not this one this is a confirm password and i want to validate this confirm password with the password field so we need to provide here the password the field name so this is how we can provide the field name here this is the compare validator and here is the other field other field name which should be compared with this field so this password field will be compared with this confirm password field but sometimes this may go wrong there is other way of giving it like name of 
password failed this will get the name of this particular property and it will pass to the compare this is the right way of defining the compare attribute in this we have seen validate never and string length and range validator and compare validator these are the validators we can use in this demo there are other validators also these are all the inbuilt validators out of this built-in attribute validators we have seen validate never and there is a credit card validator credit card attribute this will validate the credit card format and there is a compare validator we have seen it and there is an email address validator we have seen it there is a phone attribute this will validate the particular number is in telephone number format or not this is a range validator we have seen it and there is a regular expression validator if you want to validate one field based on the regular expression you can use this one and there is a required field validator we have seen it in a previous video string length we have just now seen this string length and there is a url validator so this will be used to validate the url format and there is a remote validator this validator will be used to, to validate a particular field dynamically so when you are entering a username or email if you want to validate that particular email or username is already existed in the system or not you can use this remote validator so the format to use the remote validator is like this remote attribute this is the remote attribute so if you want to use the remote attribute validator you need to define a method first here the remote validator is used to check whether the email is already available in the system or not so for this email we need to decorate it with a remote attribute like this and for that remote attribute you need to provide the action method details meaning action method name and in which controller that action method is written so this is the controller name and this is the action method so this is the action method so when we are typing some name or entering some value this will trigger this action method this action method will take the email as input and it will check that email with the system and if the email is already there then it will return a response like email is already in use so if the email is not there then this will return true meaning if the email is not there then it is correct to be created these are all the inbuilt attribute validators you can try on this we have written few attribute validators let us test this so i am running this I'm entering student name more than 30 characters. Okay, this is some bigger name and age. Age should be between 10 to 20. I'm entering 30 and address I H Y D. The password here I will enter V123 and I want to enter a wrong confirm password 23 so i'm clicking on execute here we can see age field the field age must be between 10 and 20. we have entered 30 that's why it is saying age must be between 10 and 20 and the student name the field student name must be string with a maximum length of 30. It is saying student name must be maximum length of 30 characters, but we have entered more characters. Confirm password. Confirm password and password do not match. Let us fix this. I am entering V123 is a password, and I am entering 15 as the student age. I am entering new student. This is the new student name now i am clicking on execute the student got created third student got created with the new details that's how the validations will work for more videos like this please like share and subscribe thank you